السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أنا الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله وهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد جزاكم الله خير my dear respected brothers and sisters may Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless everyone who is uh, trying to listen to this lesson and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى uh, surround us with his angels and we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to give us the sincerity for us to do this so brothers and sisters, we've been talking about this for quite some time so as far as the, in how do we as Muslims develop our doctrine, uh, our aqidah. And, uh, you know, one of the most um, uh, common misconception that we see all the time is that many people think that it's, uh, it's based on blind faith or based on something that is, um, uh, you know, non-rational. But alhamdulillah, I mean, you know, that one of the things that we as Muslims, we always should be proud of, and I keep repeating this, is the fact that we are, are the basis of our religion is based on solid background. Alhamdulillah, I So brothers, today we're going to be talking about this and discussing the methods. How how do we deduct? How, how do we deduce? Uh, how do we infer the basis of our religion, the method that we utilize? So... One question that some people might ask is, what, you know, how what, how is this related to me? How is it going? How how I'm gonna, you know, how I'm gonna what, what I'm gonna take from this lesson, for you know, for me forward. So, brothers and sisters, yeah, we live in a world nowadays that many of us are. Um, we see many types of doubts, many types of, uh, uh, you know, you know, uncommon questions. So the question here is that we could use the same method that we're going to be learning today. Of how how can we arrive at answers to all these doubts, answers to all these misconceptions? Because these today we're going to be doing what we're going to be doing today is how yes how we're going to deduce the doctrine of Islam, but also the same thing can be can be can be implemented implemented. The same thing can be replicated when we're trying to answer any other question in in life. When it comes to when someone comes to you with a doubt with a doubtful matter. Will someone come to you with a misconception? How are you going to answer it? Are you going to going to say, "Well, you know, you're right," and then then you turn your face? No, you're going to do some sort of research. How is the research going to? How is the research going to be? How what what sources you you're going to be utilizing? You know, based on what sources and what are the priority of sources, and etc. So that's what we should be what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to share the presentation with you, so everybody will be will be able to going to see it. Okay. So this is the presentation, Bismillah ta'ala, okay? So today, what we're going to be doing is, is we're trying to, what is the doctrine and inference and the structure and method, Bismillah ta'ala, okay? So again, I'm going to, I'm going to be start, starting out with a very basic stuff, you know, what, what is, what is inference? I'm going to, I, I will, people t- tend to ask the same question all, you know, all the time. What is inference? What does that mean? Here we're talking, again, we're talking about what is the steps that it takes to prove something? What is the steps that it takes to prove something? And that's what we're going to be doing today, is what is the method that we take to, to prove a doctrine, to, to, to prove our aqidah, the basis of our aqidah. So we're going to be going through, with Allah Ta'ala, a few different steps. With Allah Ta'ala. The very first thing that we need to keep in mind, brothers and sisters, is when we are trying to, to prove a conception, the very first question that we need to ask ourselves is, is the following. Okay, The first steps that we do in this, in this investigation, in this researching, it must, must we must have a full conception of the question in order for us to arrive at the right answer. Some some people like to, to do shortcuts. Some people try to uh, cut corners. Some people try to look at certain uh, uh, evidences and leave others no. When you are trying to, to arrive at any at any question or researching any subject, you have to make sure that you collect everything that you have so you could surround yourself with the with with from you know from uh, so you could surround yourself with 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 you know, 360 degrees of everything that is surrounding that that issue so that's number one and that's very important because why is that because we, we see this all the time we see this in, in which that people wanted to you know they want to prove something based on their ego based on their uh how like we talked about this last time, based on what, what they like, and they bring the evidence that, that they want you to see. And they completely disregard a whole lot of evidences 
that they intentionally or unintentionally try to hide from you. And this is not correct. So the very first thing that we have to do is that you have to make sure you have, you have proper conception of the issue. Surround yourself with this issue from all aspects. Number two, brothers and sisters, the very first thing that we need to do is that we have to make sure that we are sorting, sourcing, sort, sorting out the, the sources, okay? And here we're going to be talking about a few things that we must understand as Muslims. Uh, when we can't, we, when we when we, need, we when we want to sort out the types of um, sources that we have that enable us to arrive at the answer of that question. Like for instance, we have the Quran and we have the Sunnah. So we, uh, first of all, the Quran of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the word of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, then the saying of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. Then where we where we, where we have we have something called an ijma, the consensus of of all the Muslims, like the majority of the big scholars, what they say, okay? And then we have some, something called يعني, العقل, what, the, what, what, the, what our rationale say, al-fitra, what our in instincts say. So there's a lot of things that we have to take into perspective, you know, in order for us to arrive at uh, a proper answer, okay? So the very first thing is that we have to see, to see brothers and sisters, is what we call, يعني, what we call al-i'tibar wa adam al-i'tibar. What is something that we call, in, this, in, in, in English, we call it what is something that we regard or something that we just we disregard. What does that mean? Meaning, يعني, subhanallah, every single, every science, every field of knowledge have its own sources. Like, for instance, in the field of geography, they, they have a certain sources that they go by. If, in the field of medicine, they have a certain, you know, uh, sources that they go by. We have to make sure the very first thing is that we do is that when we are talking about a subject, we have to go to its sources. There's something, what, what is something that is going to, you know, what we consider regard or disregard. So that, that means that, for instance, if someone is talking about, for instance, math or physics, then we have to look at the, look at the sources of, of math and the sources of physics. Look, we look at publications, we look at research that is, that is into, into, this, into this, this mathematical question. We don't go into geography. You know, just simple stuff. So, every field of knowledge have its own inferior sources. Natural science has its own sources. History has its own sources. Humanities have its sources, and etc. So, we, 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 you know, in order for us to use, we have the the the, the right source. We have to use what you know what is appropriate and what is source or what is suitable for the, for this for this research. That's number one. Okay. Again, why is that? Because a lot of times they say, like for instance, when the people wanted to disprove a question in Islam, okay, they go into like, for instance, uh, something beyond the Quran and the Sunnah. That doesn't make any sense. If you want to prove something within Islam, you have to go by what's what, what the hierarchy of things, okay. Second thing is, a lot of times is what people now common mis 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 mistake that people fall into is what we call, um, is 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 what we call, uh, for instance, um, uh, uh, not all sources or not all evidences are in the same level of, of authenticity. For instance, we have something that is correct. You know, when it comes to the Quran, for instance, but when it comes to the hadith, we have something, we have something that we have a hadith that is correct. We have something that is okay, hasan. We have something called da'if, weak. We have something called mawdu'ah, you know, something that is fabricated. We have something called, you know, kathib, you know, purely lie. So not all, and you know, not every single, you know, evidence. We, we it's, a, it's the same thing. No, all of it have different hierarchies, and although all of it have have different, you know, have different levels. Yeah, and and, and again, I wanted to kind of shed one one uh, type of one uh, idea that I want many Muslims to understand. When we say that. Yani, things that are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, when we mention and we say something is mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah, we don't say khalas, you know, but you know, close your mind and surrender yourself to it. No. Yani, Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he said, he said, Dalalat al kitabi wa sunnah ala asul al deen laysa bi mujarat al khabar. Yani, the, the evidence of the, of, the, of, the, of the fact that the Quran and the Sunnah is, is true is not be, be, based on, on the fact that we were just told so. No, he said, Many many people who are misguided they say this whether it was, for, you know, from, from people who of, of, of all sort of misguided groups. But in, in reality, a lot of times we say Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is talking to us in the Quran, 
in, in which the human to um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to use our brain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to us in a way that we that and he proved to us you utilizing our rationale. You know, for instance, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Am khuluku min ghayri shayin am humul khaliqun. You know, were they created by themselves or 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 some or or, or, or were they created by somebody else or were they created themselves? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is he's telling us think, use your mind, use your brain. So that's that's very important that we don't we don't we, and Islam is doesn't encourage blind following. No, Islam is all about thinking and pondering and and using your rationale. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many times in the Quran says, he said, Don't they think Don't they don't they don't they use the, their their rationale? You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Afala Don't they know? You know? Uh, uh, yeah, don't, don't they don't they ponder on this? So there's a lot of times in the Quran he tells tell us, don't you think, don't you wonder, don't you, you know, rationalize this and etc. So this is very important. Okay. So again, when it comes to sorting out the the going back to our point, when it comes to sorting out our um, the evidence, it's not all evidence are the same. Evidence come in different levels. Okay. Third thing. Okay. The third type of evidence that we need to evaluate is what is what we call you know something in Islam called something. Qat'i uh, and dhanni, okay? Some evidence in the Quran, brothers and sisters, is what we call evidence that is qat'i. What does it mean? Meaning is definitive. What is what is it, a, a, an evidence in Islam that is definitive? Meaning that it, it only have one interpretation. Okay? In many, in many, many like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something, it only has one interpretation. So there's only one meaning that could, you could get out of it. This is what we call qat'i, qat'i dalala, you know, something that is, you only could be able to have one and only interpretation. Another type is what we call dhanni, dalala, something that is uh, uh, pres presumptive, you know, meaning that you're able to get more, two, يعني, two, two or more interpretation out of it. Like for instance, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالْمُطَلَّقَاتِ يُتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِنَا ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوءٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for instance, he talks about you know, the, uh, the, the, the divorcees or he talks about, talks about uh, um, uh, the, you know, the, the, the pregnant, pregnant women. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word quru'. For instance, in, in, in sharia, quru' have two different meanings. Sometimes it means uh, uh, when the, the, the stage of being clean or the stage of, 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 of period. Okay. So, so meaning the same word, but what the scholars have get out of it, two different meanings. So this is vani dalala, meaning that the, it's not definitive. It's not it's not only one interpretation. Okay, do this, khalas, it's over. You know, another example, like for instance, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has sent <clears throat> a group of the Sahaba and told them, don't pray until you reach uh, Banu Quraida. Okay, so, so yeah, this is vani. Also, you know, Allah Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, when you reach. So some of some of the some of some of the Sahaba prayed have interpreted in such way that they said you know Prophet Muhammad meant this way and some of them, so some of them prayed early and some of them play, prayed later okay so again that's the point here. the point here is that when the 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 words or the command is not concrete when it's not concrete is is what we call presumptive meaning to have not only one interpretation but rather than several so this is this is the difference between Something that is definitive and something that is presumptive. Again, we can't uh, um, assume only one interpretation of the presumptive to be the correct one. Maybe there's others, you see. And that's so, so, some, sometimes what people tend to, the mistake that some people will do, they only take one meaning or one interpretation and neglect the other ones. Okay? And this is wrong. Okay? So this is, again, one type of evidence that we need to sort out. Another type of evidence is what we call al ihkam wa tashabuh. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, in, in, in English, we call precision and elusiveness. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in the Quran, "هو الذي أنزل على عبد هو ال هو الذي هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب وأخرى متشابهة." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, brothers and sisters, and this is even important for the Muslims to understand. There, is, uh, there are some verses in the Quran <clears throat> what we call muhkam, meaning that it's precise. 
or 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 what we call things that uh, that we go back to like the main branch that we go back to okay and other ones that is is uh, is what we call elusive meaning that it could be more than one type uh, you could translate it in, in several ways let me give you an example so you could have a better understanding it's different than uh, definitive embry some some uh, uh, yeah, uh, is, is different than what we what we call you know vanni wa qatai let me give you an example when, when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for instance when he says qul huwa allahu ahad allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what one so this is muhkam meaning that it have this is what we go back to that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what is one okay but when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala another ayah he says inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun we the one who uh, revealed the Quran and we the one who's going to protect it. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, he says we, does that mean more than one? No. Here he means we, the, the of majesty, you know. So how, how are we going to, how, how are we going to translate this? We go back to the muhkam, to the main source, okay? In which that we say, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, muhkam is, this where we go back to. In which that, <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. Okay, and this is means something else. Means that this is the, the way of majesty. It doesn't contradict the first one, but this is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tends to experience him, himself sometimes. Another example. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for, for instance, says, um, like when he talks about Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. Okay. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blowed into Sayyidina Isa, Jesus, Jesus, son of Mary, from his own spirit. So does that mean he's son of God? Does, it mean, does that mean he's God? No. This is mutashabih. This is something, you know, elusive. It, 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 it does not, that's not, that's not what it not means. What is muhkam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wa inni abdullahi atana al-kitaba wa ja'ala al-nabiyya. I am the servant of Allah. Here, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blowed into him, but that doesn't mean he's, he's God. But Allah in, in the muhkam, what is, what is precise, what we go back to is that Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, Jesus peace be upon him is what is a son is is a, is a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the way we, we and that's the problem that you see sometimes with other religions there is no no difference any 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 <clears throat> any evidence can be interpreted but no there are certain certain things that we have that we can think of as concrete that we go back to you know it's it's something that that it's it's the basis that we go back to and everything is that you know it's, it's it branch as of Arabic. It does not they don't contradict each other, but we translate it based on the muhkam. We be, we translate what is elusive based on the muhkam. You see, so this is the way we go, and this is very important. That's many many people tend to misunderstand. Okay. Um, three and another important aspect that is is that. Brothers and sisters, when we are trying to adjust or understand the relationship between the sources, we have to make sure we, we, we have to make sure of the following. Okay, is the fact that one one of the origins of the, of 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 the of the deduction, yani, is controlling the relationship between 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 all these sources. We have to understand that not all all the sources are the same. Like for instance, just like we mentioned here, some, sometimes things are correct, sometimes it's not correct. Sometimes things are definitive, sometimes not definitive, sometimes things are muhkam, sometimes not. So we have to understand when we bring all the evidences together, we have to we have to know the priority. Is it Quran? Is it Sunnah? Is it Ijma? Is it Sahih or is it not Sahih? Is it is it muhkam or is it or is it or, or is it mutashabih? Is it qat'i or is it dhanni? You see? So this is the way, this is the relationship between all of them. We have to protect and that's what the scholar does. The scholar he he put all these, you know, all these evidence in front of him and based on that he would make a, a, a proper understanding of the situation so this is the way we, we tend to evaluate things okay okay next thing is inshallah number so how, how we do how we, we we go about that the very first thing is that you know, the, the different setting of the evidence is in terms of you know, how, how and we, i just mentioned this is based on how strong or how close or how the hierarchy of the evidence the second thing is that is that yeah, I mean, we also <clears throat> we have we take in perspective if the revelation is the main proof 
of the piece of evidence, it doesn't mean that we neglect everything else. No. You know, just because something is, is revealed by Prophet Muhammad and his, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that does not mean we neglect the rationale and the aql and the fitra. No, 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 no. We we take that part of our uh, way, we, way we, we arrive at the conclusion. Yes, we, we the very first important thing is revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't, and that's another thing, brothers and sisters, we have to understand that not everything that human beings, we are limited in, into our minds. We don't know everything. I don't know everything. You don't know everything. So who knows everything is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is instructing us to, to do th certain things, it's what is good for us. You know, it's what is good for us. And sometimes, we, and sometimes we know the wisdom for it and sometimes we don't. Okay? But again, when we are trying to gather the evidence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell us to shut, shut off our mind. He, t he told us to, to utilize our, you know, our brain and etc. And there are many, many, many aspects of that measure in the Quran. Just like I said before, okay. Third is that we have to. This is very, very important, brothers and sisters. Is that when we, yani, even Taymi, may Allah subhanahu wa taala be pleased with him, he said that, uh, yani, <clears throat> the majority or the basis of our evidence, the, the basis of the basis of our deen, of our aqidah, you could are you could almost all the time deduct it rationally. But not necessarily things beyond that. Okay, like for instance, when we talk about, and this is this, this is again, it makes complete sense. And, and this is the words of if in the scholar he said, "Al-aslu fi al-dalat al-aqli wa al-fatri dalalatuha ala masa ala masa al-i'tiqad wa al-tariq al-ijmal la bil-tafsir." So what does that mean? Meaning, like for instance, the, the main basis of our religion, the main basis of our religion or any religion, you should be able. <coughs> to arrive at rationally but something beyond that not necessarily like for instance if, if i believe that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is god and and his revelation is correct that does not mean i have to deduce and make sure if i understand each and everything afterward yeah for instance just like we, we the example of the tree that i always give the tree in order for, to, for you have to have a solid tree that, that stands against the wind, you have to have solid roots, right? That is in the ground. So this is the way. You have, everything has to be rational. Okay, The roots are like the rational, the, rational the, the, the way we deduce things rationally. Okay, When it comes to the branches, like for instance, some, some, someone, someone who said, okay, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you, do you believe in him? Yes. Does it make sense? Yes. Is it rational? Yes. Is there proof? Yes. Then, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you to pray. Okay. I could I also could rationalize the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to pray. Okay. Why five times a day? I don't know. Why not six, seven? I don't know. You see, some things we cannot do So so when your when your bases are 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 built on strong bases, you could build as many as you want. Build, build as many floors as you want. Okay, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to Yani, since, yani, during his revelation to Allah, to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sent and trying to rationalize, to watch each and everything that we're doing, then it's going to take the whole, uh, <clears throat> imagine if, if everything needs to be rationalized. Imagine if everything that we have to do as Muslims or any other religion, we have to rationalize. Then the Quran is going to be an encyclopedia, in which that is, it's not going to be one book, it's going to have to be 50 books. So that, that's why it's important that and a part of our belief is that we believe in ghaib. Yes, sometimes we some sometimes we understand the wisdom of certain things. Yes, and that's great. But that doesn't mean that you have to understand the wisdom of each and everything. Okay? That's very important for us to understand. So again, the basis we can be can be rationalized, but 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 beyond that, no. The fourth thing, brothers and sisters, is that we have to make sure when we are dealing with the requirements. <clears throat> Of the Sharia, that know 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 that the 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 Sharia Sharia itself it is the one that that dictate the reward and punishment. The Sharia, the laws of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, is the one that dictate the reward and punishment. Why? Because it's the word of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It's not based on what I think or what you think or what she thinks or what he, what he thinks or our neighbor thinks. No. Again, this is part of. Again, we could sometimes we know. Uh, that the wisdom behind it sometimes we don't but if we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what knows what's best for us then we 
trust and we believe and we submit to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. Number four here, I just take the tools of understanding the resources of, in, of inference. What does that mean, brothers and sisters? It means here is that when we are trying to um, when we are trying to understand the message of the Sharia, we have to know that um, we have to know the relationship between all these sources. Like, for instance, because 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 when we and, I, and we kind of talked to touch to this point before, okay, not, ev- not everything is the same. Not we can we can when when we are when we we have to make sure we have the right tools and all the tools are available, meaning that we have the hadith. Like for instance, when we are trying to arrive at an answer that you are researching, you have to make sure that you are looking at the, the what the scholars have said, what Allah has said, what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam have said, what the hadith have said, you know, <clears throat> what uh, you know what the predecessors have said, you know, and etc. Okay, you have to have all the tools in front of you. Okay. Now, when you are gathering the Sharia evidences, and that's the first fifth point here. When we're gathering the Sharia evidence in, in research, we have to make sure we have to make sure that the following is that um, is is what we call a dal wal madlul. Okay. It's 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 very. Um, it's very, uh, I mean, I, I, we, we kind of talked about this in the beginning of this lecture. What does it mean? <clears throat> Is that when we are trying to, to do something, uh, arrive at an answer of something, we have to make sure that the evidences that we are utilizing proves that uh, are in direct relationship with the question in mind. Let me give you an example. Let's say we, we, we try to say uh, how the sun gives energy okay and someone said well i have a, a light bulb in front of me and it gives lights and i'm going to use that to prove to say how the sun gives energy and what is the relationship between a light bulb and the sun you see so whatever we are whatever evidences that we are using that in arabic we say it that whatever we are whatever evidences that we you are we are using it has to have a, a direct relationship with the question that we have in mind we cannot bring يعني, like for instance we cannot say wallahi i'm going to bring evidences that is in medicine to prove geography or so it has to be related you know and i kind of talked about this in my, this is what we, in, in philosophy they call it adal wal madlul you know evidence and its relationship with uh, with uh, with with its connection okay sixth thing is is that taking into account the significance of the context is very important so many people fall into this the problem so many times when they are researching things in islam or try or here or trying to find a doctrine in islam is that always look at the context don't take things out of context. Don't again. This is very common. Even sometimes with people who are weak in Islam, they take things out of context. Or some people who, who misinterpret something take things out of context. Make sure that you are when you are researching, is that what? Is that you are taking things within their context? Okay. Seventh thing is make sure that you are paying attention to the requirement of the process. Again, you know, make sure that you are following. The, the process itself and seventh and m eighth and not five and, and that you are making sure that while you are researching that you are responding or answering all the attacks that is coming towards you and that's the problem that we see with other religions may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them is when we are trying to research an issue I'm going to explain this again. We are trying to, and we're trying to arrive. At, when you are trying to arrive, researching an issue and trying to arrive at a conclusion, and let's say someone, while he's doing that, you know, he had, let's say, five doubts that have made him think about how to answer that question. Okay. If I am while I'm doing this my research, I want, and I was not able to answer these five doubts, that there is something wrong with my doctrine. Of course. But if I was able to 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 answer all of my, my all of the, those questions, then then 
whatever conclusion I have arrived at is 100% correct. And whatever whatever doctrine I have is solid. But that's the problem that we see with many doctrines, other doctrines that is beyond Islam, is that, that they don't have an actual explanation. They don't have a, a reason. I mean, it's, all, it's, it's either based on, you know, desire or ego or based on the issue they don't want to argue for the sake of argument no all of these things are yeah i mean Allah other guide them uh, are have no basis but again it's important when you are researching as this eighth point that we, we are mentioning here is the fact that you are answering all the objection that is coming against you otherwise what's going to happen you're going to have a weak argument you have no basis your doctrine is weak and etc. So, again, brothers, this is, this is the method that, that we, we, our religion is based on. You know, first of all, we have, I mean, in summary, in summary, I'm going to summarize everything here now, is the fact that we have to make sure that you are researching the the, the, the question from all, all sorts of aspects. Make sure that you are understanding the level, the level of evidences. Sometimes things are, you know, you know, make sure that you are using the, the evidences for the right source. You have to make sure that things are not all the same in you know, authenticity. You have to make sure some not all evidence are the same level. Some things are definitive. Sometimes some sometimes is presumptive. You know, you know, and qat'i. Sometimes things are muhkam. Sometimes mutashabih, precise and elusive. And also, when we are doing this, is we have to make sure that we understand that not all the, the relationship among all of these evidences. We have to put a hierarchy. To what is most important, like for instance, that revelation is the, the highest thing that we take, and then after that, the Prophet Muhammad, then an ijma, then etc. You know, and then <clears throat> while we are, we, are, we, are, we are doing this, okay, we have to make sure that you know, we have to make sure that yani, we, we, we are open to, uh, to other side, uh, other sort of evidences, things that are, yani, for instance, rash, rationale or uh, uh, fitra, okay. Um, also, we have to make sure that and yeah, understand, give the Sharia its 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 its, uh, its uh, priority. You know, we have to make sure that we utilize all the tools that are, are, are that are available. We have to make sure that yeah, the you know that adal wal madlul, meaning the evidence and what that is, is relating to to the question in mind, and also we have to make sure we know look, we know the context, and we have to make sure that we know we're able to answer all the objections with that. And alhamdulillah, this is the method for deducing our doctrine. Uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide all of us, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept for us. Zakum Allah khair. Lahish to smakum subhanakum alhamdulillah, and astaghfiruka to the balaikwas. In the Sahara, if you host, illa dinamus, and hat was also the hakkot was the Zakum Allah khair.